And did she have a job here? Did she live here? What, what, what was her interest? She was a lady. Right. The lady? She's the lady. She walks outside. She goes around the perimeters of the gardens. And she's still searching. Can you give me a name? A Can you give name? me a name, please? Lady Dorothy. Lady Dorothy? Mm hmm Lady Dorothy. Derek's description of this wandering spirit did seem to coincide with previous reports of the so-called White Lady. Thought by many to be Dorothy Southworth, whose Protestant lover was murdered by her Catholic father. To this day, her forlorn spirit is said to reside at the hall. As we move through to the parlour, it is Kieran that notices that the atmosphere is starting to change. Everything all right, Kieran? Yeah, it's just there's an obvious temperature difference between this room versus the other room. I think you can subjectively feel, anyway, a slight drop in temperature, and it's just a degree drop. Would that be because the, the lights are all on in that room and maybe there's no lights on yeah, in this possibly, room at all? Yeah, possibly, and we were staying in there, and also there's a door yeah. open right. at the far end of the room. OK, all right. Well, you just, right? We just entered this atmosphere here. Mm and everything was taken away from me mm. in the view of the crew, all of us, and suddenly I see a, a, a lot of people in this area. They're all sitting round and they're all um, drinking ale um, and a lot of them were falling over and a lot of them were um, shouting and singing. Sorry, did someone whistle then? I heard something. I heard something come from that direction over there. Yeah. It seemed to sound like a loud whistle yeah. or a scream of some mm. description. Did you hear it, Can I just have yeah. a look in here? They're all sitting round and they're all um, drinking ale um, and a lot of them were falling over. Kieran decided to investigate a squeaky door back in the Great Hall where it was thought the whistling came from. However, the team were not convinced. It wasn't that. that was I heard that, but that was a creaky door. It wasn't oh, a... No, it was a, was a... I heard a... That wasn't what I, what, what I heard. It wasn't the same no, sound. it was a... OK. With no-one else in the building at the time, the whistling sound that many of us had heard would, for now, remain without an explanation. Would this be an isolated event, or, for some of us, just the start of a night filled with fear? I'm not bad! I'm not bad! at Salmsbury Hall, Derek had started to sense the building's religious past as well as the spirit of a lady called Dorothy, who seemingly endured a bitter and painful feud with her own father. Still perturbed by the mysterious whistle heard in the parlour, we decided to head upstairs towards the long gallery in the hope of further clarification. You know, coming up into this area as well, I get this, what seems to be following us. And this is not residual energy. I feel that this is active spirit energy, thinking energy of where we're going, of an individual. And what seems to be happening, it's, I know it may sound silly, but it's like as if I'm getting water thrown from the back of us over our shoulders here. And that water, I feel, is symbolic. So it's a loving a loving, caring, religious energy. And the person, I feel, uh, a man who, without a doubt, and he, he goes all the way through this building, and I just put him in the faith, a very, 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 very strong faith. So strong that nothing would waver him. And I feel, the, way, the only way I can describe it is if he's a priest. Mm -hmm. And he, he had a lot of pressure on his shoulders, I feel, as if he had to... Um, I don't feel a man to denounce what he, he believes in, but he had to be very, very, very careful, very careful in who he um, talked about his faith. And I feel there are times 
not even just on this upper level, down because he used to go further down to the level he moves about. I feel he could be quite active at times, but he would not show himself in what we call uh, a manifestation or development of the full spirit body, okay. but probably moving through and making noises as well. A lot of noises. What sort of noises? Uh, you know, walking, scurrying. Um, and I feel that speed, he would leave the upper levels in his time and go right down because he was going from these levels with a feeling of being scared and rushing down, rushing down to get to an area, get there, and it's like as if he's arriving and he's feeling safe. But at times he didn't feel safe on the upper levels. I feel there's also, oh, listen to this now, mm -hmm. oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There was a man here, maybe it's the same person, the same uh, individual man, the priest, because he's definitely got garbs on, clothes like a, a priest, mm -hmm. but there seems to be a memory with this man going back 1500, 1500, 1566. So there are two priests here. There are two priests here. They're separate from, I feel, maybe a hundred years difference mm -hmm. in time. One of them moves about and he believes in his faith and he will never be moved from that. But there's another man of the cloth who's, he walks around tormented because he was murdered. Yeah, where, was he, like, where was he murdered? Can we walk through, yeah. please? Sure. Can we walk through? Are you sure, Sam? Are you sure? Okay. We appear to be surrounded by a lot of spiritual activity. Perhaps the priest's room would offer us further clues. And just as we enter this, here, he, the energies are very strong, still of his movements. This is definitely a man of the um, cloth, mm -hmm. uh, a priest, a Catholic priest, I feel. Are you talking about the second priest or the first one? No, I feel it's, um, I feel it, this could be the second one, okay. this now. Uh, I feel the other priest was wanting to lead us up here. Mm -hmm. um, the first priest, okay, Sam says here, just call him John. Okay. This is John, and he loves here. He loves here. But the second priest here, as we come in, and I feel he manifests here. He's in torment. And can we go through into this yeah, here? On, well, this is quite, I mean, sorry. sorry. This is quite horrible in here because um, as we've entered here, um, all I'm picking up on the residual energy, it seems to just be, and I can see it, and it's not budging at all. You're going to say, oh, horrible. But there's nothing here other than as if this whole floor is just covered in thick blood. Mm -hmm. Thick blood. A big pool of it. And that pool of blood has come from a human being. And I feel here, please, that um, this priest has led me here to this other priest, a priest lost his life here. He was murdered. His life was taken from him. So Derek had sensed the separate spiritual energies of two priests. The first, Father John, appears untroubled, a stark contrast to the aura of the other religious figure. Intriguingly, of all the rooms that David Wells had earlier visited, it was here that he had felt a tragic event from Salmsby Hall's past some kind of sadness, I don't know why. Almost like a duty he had to perform, a sadness he had to perform. Whether it was a, I don't know, I have to go with what I get, it's not very hard. Mm. Um, it's like an execution, you know, it's almost like an execution. These revelations only add to the tension amongst all of the crew as we switch our cameras to night vision. But would this be the only bloody demise that the hall has to offer?
I've just been mentioning to you a moment ago, Evie, that um, since walking up to the higher levels, 